Hi there, this is the commentary for the Yamata no Orochi boss fight from Neo, and thanks to Brian for the encouragement uh, on doing this. Uh, this is actually the second recording because I accidentally deleted uh, my first take on this, and uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I was pretty satisfied with it, but you know, since this is a second take, I guess I can do slightly better. But anyway, you start off with just one head. This is the of course, eight-headed serpent of Japanese folklore that we're talking about, and the fight does get uh, more tedious as it goes, but it's still a lot of fun, especially once you get the hang of it. Of course, my strategy, run up to it, hit it with a spear in high stance. I'm really going for attack power on this one because I do not want to fight a long protracted battle, but then again, that's what this turns into because you are fighting eight of these, alright? It's got eight heads, uh, you start off fighting um, heads with non-elemental attacks, alright? Though, uh, yeah, they just shoot energy blasts at you and uh, they have this breath attack. Well, also, They'll also try to bite you or basically slam their heads onto the roof and uh, just try to... <laughs> squish you anyway. So of course, now, I, now that I took down the first head, I am now fighting two. For some reason I always go for the right one, the one on the right, and uh, I tried mixing it up on my other attempts. Uh, didn't quite work out, so I always go for this one first. As you can see here, they're quite easy to take down. They uh, don't have a lot of HP apparently, and if you do manage to nail them right on the head, that's what? Uh, probably three to four times more damage than you normally do with a regular hit. So there you have it. Uh, the other heads are starting to emerge by this point. And you gotta watch out for that, uh, that lunge attack, that, that bite. Because if they do catch you, they'll chew on you and spit you back out onto the roof. And considering that... I built a William that is kind of squishy. That's an instant kill. And that is uh, how I died most of the time during my five or six attempts. Probably, what, went up to seven. I know that uh, I didn't go beyond ten attempts on this one. That would have been an exercise in frustration. And uh, yes, do not be afraid to use ranged weapons here. If you just want that last hit and they're kind of out of range and you don't want to risk uh, getting hit on the way in, just shoot him. It works just fine. So now that the upper section of the roof is destroyed, you've got these huge crystals that you can uh, duck right behind. And for the most part, they won't hit you. All right, Unless, of course, uh, the heads behind you are shooting at you. Then that's when you just frantically run around. Just try to make short work of these, go for your heaviest attacks. Of course, Key pulse to recover that key. Run back. Hit him again. Uh, from what I can tell, yeah, they always just do one attack, then approach the edge of the roof, uh, just within range of your attacks. Just played it safe with a spear here, so I can get, you know, the best range I could. Even though uh, I think at this point my character is more proficient with swords and dual swords. And as much as possible, once they're in this state where they have their heads just right on the roof, smack them right there, does a ton of damage. So yes, this uh, took me a while to figure out. I'm frantically running around here, and not really going in. I only have what? I only had five elixirs to work with. I'm down to three at this point, and I have I still have four heads to deal with. So here I still got, yeah, I'm st my spear still imbued with Earth Element. Uh, living weapon to make short work of this one. That's pretty quick. Now we have the wind, water, and lightning heads left. I had to uh, shore up my wind resistance on this one because I really hate having my attack power halved. So keep going, and just in case you're wondering why the hell it sounds so windy in the main gameplay clip, it's because I forgot to mute my uh, PlayStation camera microphone and had an electric fan blowing right into it. 
Which is kind of appropriate because we are fighting in the middle of a storm. So there. I still get hit with the, uh, with the debuff, but, uh, it doesn't last very long because I have high wind resistance. Trying to get some hits in. I really hate that, uh, that bite attack. I usually have, um, close to full HP and it still manages to kill me. Alright, so it's down. Now we're down to the last two heads. They're still fully capable of destroying the crystals, by the way, so don't rely on them too much for cover. Of course, since you're fighting all of these at the same time, prepare to get hit with a variety of elemental statuses. Fire's pretty easy to, to deal with. It's just stop, drop, and roll, like in real life. So yeah, the Serpent Heads can basically <laughs> destroy the crystals by doing that same bite attack. So I guess better players would still stay within range of the Serpent Heads, but no. I really, really just wanted to run to the other side. Just be at a, I guess, somewhat safe distance. So now that you've killed all the other heads, the last one's gonna be powered up. And, guess what? It's gonna have all the other elemental attacks of the, uh, of the ones that you just killed. That's fun. Of course, the uh, ice spears. The sweep attack, just within range, not getting a lot of hits on this one. But the cool thing is, it still takes uh, the same amount of damage as it would in its regular state, with probably just a little more individual HP. It's not like you're fighting a completely revitalized boss, you're just fighting uh, the last Serpent Head with just a little bit of an HP buff. That's uh, how I see it, anyway. So we're down to nearly half HP. And I've got one elixir left. Yes, I've been trying to slow it down, but uh, I think it's well outside of uh, the effective range of the talismans. Unnecessary backflips. They look cool anyway. And yes, it has those uh, dark Amrita spear attacks that uh, the red Oni or red yokai have. The ones that you encounter a little later in the game. I hate those. And they do quite a bit of damage. And throughout most of the game, I've been wearing uh, medium to light armor because I wanted to keep my agility. Heavy armor makes you uh, into basically a walking tank, but your dodging suffers. And uh, I can't have that. Might be someone else's uh, playstyle, might suit someone else, but I can't work with it. Anyway, I activate Living Weapon here, and do not get a single hit in. Which is really sad. <laughs> Sweep attack once again. By the way, thanks to Brian for pointing out that double tapping X gives you a full roll and not just a quick step. 
you will have uh, better invincibility frames on that one. Breath attack. So I'm getting pretty desperate here. And like I said earlier, you can actually shoot it. Well, it won't completely kill off this boss. There, yeah, that's my phone. <laughs> but you can run up to it and trigger one last cutscene. And just, yeah. <laughs> that's the end of it. Now, I know that there is one extra mission after the credits, but I would actually like to consider this as the final boss of the main story. William's uh, adventures in Japan are done by this point. And spoiler alert, you actually managed to catch up to Edward Kelly on the beach and just put him out of his misery. And uh, considering that this is my first playthrough of the game, it's also my first taste of Divine Weaponry. Just right there, on the beach. Mine for the taking. <laughs>